Hi, it's Milena. Welcome back to my channel. It is now Friday and I'm going to do a weekend reading vlog this weekend. And to do that, I asked some other booktubers to pick a little black classic for me. Now, I have the entire collection right there. I got them for my 26th birthday last year. I think I have now read 12, but it seems like a good idea to give it some priority for an entire weekend. And it also seemed like a lot of fun to ask booktubers to pick one for me and they all filmed a little clip of why they picked the one they picked. Before I show that, I'll explain what the Little Black Classics are. These are 80 little books with around 50 pages each. It is an entire variety of collections of short writings from authors all through time. Some authors are really famous. You have Charles Dickens, Oscar Wilde, and Elizabeth Gaskell, Emily Bronte. But there are a few that are written by Anonymous. There are some fairy tales. And I also have the modern classics, but I gravitate towards them a bit more. So I've read quite a lot of those, but not yet of the Black classic. So let's see which one the lovely booktubers uh, picked for me. Hi Milena, thank you so much for letting me choose a book for you. This has been such an honor and also really stressing me out. Uh, I know that you've been interested in reading more Russian literature, so I've decided to go for Anton Chekhov's Gooseberries, and not just because I'm Russian and because I own this book. <laughs> uh, this has three short stories by him about love and life. I personally love his writing style and I hope this will be up your alley as well. Happy reading! Well, good evening. Milena, you've asked for a video of why I've chosen the little black classic. I want you to read it, and, and so I shall. The book that I've chosen comes from an author whose novel is known world over. Probably a book that people who haven't read would give you some understanding of what that book is about, but I believe his name is not really associated with the Penguin Little Black classics. Like, if we just have a think for a moment, like, what names could we rattle off? We got Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, Chekhov, Jane Austen, Emily Dixon, Edgar Allan Poe, there's Rousseau, there's the Suffragettes, there's uh, Sun Tzu, Blake, Shelley, Wolf, Yeats. But out of those classics, Herman Melville's The Maldive Shark really stood out to me because this is nature writing, this is historical nature writing, which is not something I would automatically go out to read, but it stayed with me in the fact that it's so different and how you see Melville having to really document, really talk about the creatures that he sees as he's traveling across the world. It's not the greatest work of fiction, and once you've read it, you can see why Moby Dick completely swallows up the Maldive shark and the poems and essays and documents that he has within that small collection. But it gives you an insight into a type of writing, into an era of the mindset of Melville as he's trying to explore and write down his passions, what he sees out in the open, in the wild, and how he is trying to preserve that in writing. Dag Milena, het is Lieselotte hier. Je vroeg of ik één van je Little Black Classics kon kiezen. En toen ik zag dat uh, Catullus I Love and I Hate in the Mix was, was mijn uh, gedacht snel gemaakt. Um, ik heb hem moeten vertalen toen ik in mijn laatste jaar uh, in het middelbaar zat. En ik denk dat het het meeste plezier wat ik gehad heb met vertalen is geweest. Hij schrijft heel erg universele gedichten die nog steeds makkelijk en, en heel herkenbaar zijn voor, voor lezers van vandaag. Ik hoop dat je heel veel plezier met hem gaat hebben. Hij is ook heel grappig, dus ik hoop dat die grappige stukjes ook in die Little Black Classic opgenomen zijn. Heel veel plezier, heel veel succes met al die kleine boekjes te lezen, want ook al zijn ze klein, ze zijn met heel erg veel. En uh, ja, hopelijk tot snel. Dag! Hello, Milena. My challenge for you this weekend is to read a little black classic that you've never heard of. You don't know the author, you know nothing about it, but the title really intrigues you. Okay, good luck. <laughs> okay, I got them right here. This is 
a little stack. I got one really interesting recommendation through Instagram as well, and that is this one. The Saga of Gunlang Serpent Tongue. Ranging across Scandinavia, England and Ireland, a Viking Age epic of two poets in doomed pursuit of Helga the Fair. I'm going to put it in the possibility pile if I can finish the other ones. But Kieran recommended Herman Melville, and of course I know him through Moby Dick. Don't think I will ever read Moby Dick because it's giant. <laughs> I do like that I now will read some Herman Melville. And then Alana recommended to me uh, Anton Chekhov's Gooseberries. And I really enjoy Anton Chekhov's writing, what I've read from him so far, which is a play and a short story. So that isn't much. So you have The Kiss, The Two Volodage and Gooseberries. So I'm really very curious. So Lisa Lotte picked one for me that would have taken me a long time, I think, to big because it sounds really quite intimidating and when she says she translated from latin it sounds even more intimidating i hate and i love by catalus by turns rapturous erotic and despairing this astonishing modern verse tale of an ancient roman poet all consuming infatuation with one woman it sounds like a bit hit or miss kind of thing for me and then sarah the awesome person that she is i picked a little black classic of which i had never heard the author of and the title is just the best thing you can find. It says how a ghostly story was brought to light by a common or garden butcher's dog. Who comes up with that? That's amazing. <laughs> and it is by Johann Peter Hebel. He sounds Scandinavian German. Let's see. German is it? It's German. Sparkling miniature German fables, sketches and telltales including Kafka's favorite story. Ooh, this sounds intriguing. Thank you, Sarah, for that prompt, because this would have been a book that would have been one of the last ones for me to pick from this collection. And that actually sounds really good. So it is now Friday. I do have a bit of a busy day today. I need to go to my physical therapist in about two hours, and we're meeting my parents for dinner tonight. Maybe I will start one of these later tonight. I asked some people if they wanted to do like a reading sprint on Discord on Sunday, so that will probably help me to read at least one of these. So now the ultimate question is, can I read five little black classics in one weekend? Because I'm a slow reader and these can take a lot of time. We'll see. Welcome to Saturday morning pajama morning. <laughs> I had the plan to stay in my pajamas all day today because you need a day like that sometimes. Yesterday was very busy, very fun, was very busy. But I think we're going to get some coffee and bagels for lunch later today. So I have to get dressed at some point. Yesterday evening I started I Hate and I Love. I read about half of it that are poems from 80 to 50 before Christ. I think they are quite funny. They are love stories. They're uh, also about sex, which I think is just pretty funny. And I'm going to read the second half of that right now. It is 10 o'clock and I think we're going to leave in about two hours so I think I can pick another one before we leave. I finished I Hate and I Love. Uh, I really enjoyed it, even though there is a lot of hate towards women, but this is a long time ago. Most of the poems are about a woman that he is very much in love with called Lesbia, and she is like his femme fatale, which he invented. that. Poems are quite dramatic, but also very uh, funny. He plays with words, and I think Lisa Lotte was definitely right in saying that it translates very well for today's a reader. It's also about him losing his brother, mourning his brother, and therefore not being able to write poetry. I would definitely recommend this one if you want to read something from the Asian times. So I asked you guys on Instagram which one I should read next, so I'm going to wait for the answers to come in. And while I wait for that, I think I'm going to read at least the first story of Anton Chekhov's Gooseberries, which is called The Kiss. Sounds exciting. <laughs> Hi, it is a quarter to 12 so i kind of have to hurry i need to get dressed but i read the first story from anton Chekhov, and it's about a very bored soldier who 
is with his group of soldiers. Oh god, I don't know the right words for that. But they get to a house where they are invited to dance and to eat. It's pretty clear that all the soldiers miss the women in their lives. And then a woman comes up to him, probably thinking he is someone else, and she kisses him on the cheek. And when they get back to their dance and to their work, he can't stop thinking about her and he just keeps on saying how boring his soldier life is because he is so used to it and how much he daydreams about her. I will read you two passages, which is beautiful. I think Chekhov's writing is so... It's, it's not that descriptive, but you really get a very good overview of what the environment where the character is in looks like. Two soft, sweet-smelling arms, undoubtedly a woman's, encircled his neck, a burning cheek pressed against his, and at the same time there was the sound of a kiss. But immediately after the kiss the woman gave a faint cry and shrank backwards in disgust. And then a little later he and his battalion, I think, they travel on and he is daydreaming while he's riding his horse. Breaks on! rang out the command every time they went downhill. He shouted the command too, and feared that his own shout would shatter his daydreams and bring him back to reality. I just love this. I thought it was so beautiful. I'm going to get dressed really fast now because our pickup is at 20 over 12 and it's a 20 minute drive. So um, yes, before I start annoying boy really uh, much, I'm going to log off now. And uh, when I'm back in my pajamas reading, I'll see you. <laughs> pajamas i made another cup of coffee but we had a lot of fun going to the bagels and beans getting a bagel and a cup of coffee and then we drove to uh, the river that runs through our city and we sat there outside on a bench and had our bagel which is kind of like sitting on a terrace but like covid proof it made me really tired i kind of used up my spoons for today because of that but i read the other two stories by Anton Chekhov and I really liked it, I really enjoyed it. It's definitely a five star read for me. The second story was about a young girl who married an older man but eventually she discovers that she didn't really want to marry him and she meets an other relative who decided in her 30s that she didn't want to marry and she became a nun. She comes to the realization that those are the only two options for women. She doesn't like either but she decides to be set aside with the choices she has made because there's no changing them. The second story is about two brothers which is called gooseberries and it is a bit more of a philosophical story about uh, poverty and about choosing for yourself or helping other people. I think Chekhov is so good at creating characters and environments in short stories because I felt like I really got to know the characters even though I got about 20 pages with them only. So I'm really very impressed and I'm definitely going to read more of his short stories. So I don't think I'm going to keep on reading right now. It is 3.30 so I'm going to cook in about two hours but I did ask you guys on Instagram uh, which little black classic I should read next so just going to check the poll. Herman Mulville got 52% and the German Fables got 48 so it's a very close call but I'm going to read this one next. I'm going to watch some booktube first and then I'm going to start this little black classic.
it is Sunday, it's 11 o'clock and I want to give you an update on my reading. I'm reading The Maldi Shark and this was really quite difficult for me to read. I thought the English was, uh, well I would say unnecessarily difficult but it's just his way of writing and of course it is from... 18, 1888 so yes that's quite a long time ago but I think compared to other works from that time this really was quite difficult. It's a collection of some poems there are 10 sketches in here of I think sailing the world finding different islands. Um, he talks a lot about turtles and like like I heard other people say before he first uses an entire sketch to talk about the beauty of turtles or not necessarily the beauty but he tries to dissect and understand them and then in next few words he's like I had turtle steak and you're like wait what? <laughs> so yes that was kind of funny but what I liked most in this collection was the last two sketches which was about a dog king apparently and the last one is runaways, castaways, solidarities and gravestones so that is all about people who are fed up with living on the ship and with having to listen to a captain and they decide to stay on the island and be a castaway and he describes how those people end up living and that was really interesting and I think in those pieces I haven't read Moby Dick but I can imagine that that atmosphere is what Moby Dick um, has and that is why it's a good read for a lot of people and then this morning I started another one and I started the one that I picked because of the amazing title and that is how a ghastly story was brought to light by a common or garden butcher's dog and um, these are very short fables they're about two pages each uh, this morning I read about half of it they are fables that are supposed to like warn the villagers they are incredibly moralized I looked up the author Johan Peter Hebel and he was a theological writer. I can definitely feel that in this book in a sense that he's trying to uh, warn people, trying to explain what is wrong and what is right. But it's also kind of funny because it seems so incredibly obvious when people are trying to play a trick on each other and you're like, who is going to fall for that? But the audience of these stories are very kind and not very worldly villagers. So who knows, this might have been helpful in 18... Oh, in 1811. Who knows? Like Jane Austen times. <laughs> in about two hours we will have a reading sprint through Discord with some Dutch booktubers. I'm not sure who is going to join. I'm sure there are a few people who will join. But it will help me definitely finish this one and at least start in this one and maybe finish this one later tonight. <laughs> finished our discord uh, read-along chat thing we w did it about an hour and a half and we had three reading sessions of 20 minutes which was perfect actually a lot of people do 30 minutes but I kind of like the 20 minutes and I still have a few pages to go in this one but it's very intriguing so these are Icelandic sagas and it kind of feels like the Greek myth but it is about a love triangle between Helga and two men whose name I cannot find but also cannot pronounce <laughs> but there are two men one with whom she's actually in love but her father decides who she gets to marry and the one she is in love with disappears and then she is forced by her father to marry the other man the way those two men try to convince her father that they are the right one is they do basically a poetry battle which is so cool i love the little pieces of poetry in there which is very based on female warriors the falkery is what they are called i really love the vibe i had to get into it for a bit but yes i enjoyed this a lot but first i'm going to take a walk before it gets dark outside <laughs> It's 
Sunday evening and very much time to wrap up this vlog. In total I read five little black classics which is what I plan to do so I'm pretty happy that worked out. The first one I read is I Hate and I Love. These were poems, love poems, I enjoyed them. It was a quick read, um, I would definitely recommend it if you want something not too difficult from that time period. Then the other one I read was Herman Melville's sketches of his travels which I did enjoy but they were quite difficult for me to read as a non-native English speaker. I think maybe if you're a native English speaker it's a bit easier. There were some nice sketches in there but it's definitely something I would recommend if you really like nature. The other one I just finished are the German fables by Johann Peter Hebel. I think maybe my least favorite of this all because all the stories are very repetitive and very moral but I do think it is an interesting look into the past. So my two favorites of this weekend were the short stories by Anton Chekhov. What I like especially about these stories were the character sketches and the genius genius way that Anton Chekhov is able to write a short story and to tell so much about a character and a situation in a short story. This is definitely the one I would recommend most from all of the five. Another one I really enjoyed especially because I do love sagas and fairy tales and mythology are these Icelandic sagas. It's the saga of Gulag Serpent Tongue. I especially liked the poetry in these sagas. And this is a little bit classic I would definitely recommend if you're into fairy tales, sagas, mythology. And I haven't really seen books on Icelandic mythology. So this would definitely be a good read if you're interested in that. So those were my reads of this weekend. Thank you so much to the wonderful people who picked these for me. Thank you Yolanda from Instagram for picking this for me. Thank you to Lana, Kieran, Sarah and Lieselotte for sending those lovely clips. Um, it's really special to receive them. I really love that. Thank you so much for doing that. I hope you enjoyed watching this vlog and let me know how you feel about the Little Black Classics collection. Is it something you will buy? Do you have maybe a few separate ones? Is the entire collection on your wish list? And do you have a favorite? I would like to know. If you enjoyed this video, I do often make weekly or weekend vlogs. So if you want to see more of that, please subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you in another video. Doei!